Okay, here I'm going to play my guitar for you, and first thing I'm going to do is play this low E string. And what you're hearing is the fundamental frequency of that low E. But you're also hearing that it's a guitar, and it's not a piano, or a flute, or a violin, or something like that. And the reason you know it's a guitar is because in addition to hearing the fundamental frequency, you're also hearing a lot of overtones of the instrument. And the overtones are essentially um, all the different harmonics that are also happening simultaneously. And together, all of those produce this really complicated, beautiful waveform, and that's how we determine which instrument is which. Now, the reason you don't really hear the overtones so much is because they have a much smaller amplitude. But I assure you, they are still there, and we're going to take a look at them right now. So here's the fundamental frequency that you're hearing, and that's when the length of the string is actually only a half of a wavelength. And so that means there's a node here, there's a node here, and there's a big an anti-node about halfway down. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is look at the second harmonic, or the first overtone. And that's when, instead of making this only be a half of a wavelength, let's make this string length equal to a wavelength. And so in that case, when you build a standing wave, you have a node here at the neck, you have a node halfway down, and you have a node at the bridge. So I'm going to put my finger here to create a node. And what I'm going to do then is I'm silencing that fundamental frequency. Because before, this was an anti-node. This needed to move a lot. And so now I'm not going to let it move. I'm just going to place my finger here gently just to cause a node so that way um, now the wavelength is half of what it was before, and if you have half the wavelength, what should happen to your frequency? It should double. Okay, so this should be twice the frequency of what we had before. So let's take a look. Versus the original. Okay, so it's definitely twice the frequency, which in music is actually an octave. All right. And uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is show you the third harmonic. So now this string length is going to give us one and a half waves. So there'll be a node here, there'll be a node about a third way down, two thirds of the way down, and then at the bridge. So in that case, if I put my finger here, I'm silencing the fundamental and the first harmonic because this part right here before had some displacement. So now I'm silencing that displacement so it can't move up and down. So now the loudest sound I'm going to hear is the third harmonic. So again, if the wavelength is a third, the frequency should be three times the fundamental. So it should sound like that, okay, which is a little bit higher than the original, three times higher. All right, so now I could look at n equals four. So in the fourth harmonic, instead of having one and a half waves here, we'll have two waves. So now each node is separated by a quarter of the length of the string. That results in a node at the neck, a quarter way down, halfway down, three quarters of the way down, and at the bridge. So in that case, put my finger here. So again, it's a quarter of the wavelength, so the frequency should be four times. All right, so that's four times the fundamental. And those are your first fundamental frequency, your first overtone, second overtone, third overtone. All right, so again, let's just see them all together. Fundamental frequency, second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth harmonic. Pretty cool stuff. And just to show you, these harmonics are different than just fretting an instrument and playing. So. Instead of a fourth harmonic, if I just put my, um, let's just put my finger here on, on this fret. That's a totally different sound than that harmonic. So there's a difference between putting your finger down and making the string shorter versus silencing a harmonic by creating a node by gently touching your finger on the string. When all of the harmonics are playing together, our ears aren't really good at distinguishing between the individual harmonics, but a spectrogram can do that. 
So when you hear that rich guitar sound, what you're actually hearing is the sum of all of these frequencies. You're hearing n equals one, n equals two, n equals three, and so forth. But to you, it's just one rich complex sound. Now the spectrogram can break that sound into the individual frequencies. So frequencies are plotted here on the y-axis. So n equals one is the lowest frequency and the frequencies continue to increase with the harmonic number. Another thing you might notice is the n equals one line is much brighter. That's telling you that the amplitude is higher, which is why that sound is the most prominent when we pluck the string. Let's try that again, but this time after I play the open string, I'm going to place my finger halfway down the string, causing a node at that point, which will silence the first harmonic. As you can see from the spectrogram, when I created a node in the middle of the string that silenced the n equals 1, n equals 3, and n equals 5 harmonics. This actually makes a lot of sense. So if you look at the diagram above, you can see that the n equals one and n equals three modes require there to be an antinode in the middle of the string. So if I prevent that antinode from happening, those modes become silenced. I love witnessing physics in my everyday life, so I hope you enjoyed this video too.